Good morning. Well, it's uh, still kind of a rainy day, although we still haven't gotten much. Uh, I think we had about a half a tenth overnight is all, so we're up to a little over three tenths now, not quite four tenths, um, which for what uh, it looked like it was going to be, that's really not too bad. So that's good. Not going to be in the fields today, but um, at least we didn't get an inch, and there's potential that we could be in the fields in a couple of days, maybe over the weekend here. So. Uh, we'll see. We'll keep an eye on stuff. I've got a few little projects going around on around the farm today here. Um, but first thing I've got is a conference call with my sales rep and agronomist on the uh, seed side of stuff. Um, just to go over some spring things, plot planning procedures, some of that kind of stuff. So since we can't have face-to-face -face meetings right now, we're going to do it on the phone. And yeah, shouldn't be no big deal. I do know I have another seed truck coming this afternoon, which hopefully is that last box of beans that I'm waiting for, and maybe we'll finish treating beans this afternoon too. That would be a, that'd be a good thing to get out of the way. I don't need to tell all of you this, but farmers are pretty darn This is not time. real exciting. So um, stresses are high, and so it's likely that you're going to have to talk the customer off the ledge a little bit, and that's normal. They're not going to... All right. Well, that was exciting, um, kind of. Uh, Anyway, so I'm done with that conference call. Um, my buddy dropped off this 2020 precision planting monitor that needs to go in our corn planting tractor. So I'm going to take that out and get it installed. And uh, that way, when we get back to the fields to plant corn, we'll be all set up and ready again. Okay, I think that's going to work. It looks like everything's uh, right. If you hit the setup, diagnose, everything's green, which is what we want. So um, we'll have to get in the field to try it basically this monitor just it it tells me mostly the same information that this one does um it just it's a little bit more reason uh, uh easy to read and figure out what it means and i also like the fact that this is only able to give me data based on what it sees through the seed sensors on the planter because it doesn't control anything. It doesn't know what it's supposed to be doing. It just knows what it actually is doing. And so I trust it a little bit more, let's say. I still love it when trucks show up unannounced. I was halfway home for lunch when this truck showed up, called and said, hey, I'm at your seed warehouse. Thanks for letting me know you were coming, dude. All right, well, that is the last box of beans that I needed for uh, my customers. Um, one of the neighboring dealers was supposed to bring me some paper bags, I think, or maybe he was gonna dump them in a box or something, I don't know, for me to treat. So that box and that box and whatever he brings me are all that I have left to treat, at least for now. Um, I do still have all of those stacks over there in the corner that are stock beans that, um, we'll uh, treat if we need them if somebody needs something in season they're there so um, I may do this treating this afternoon just to get these done and out of the way and then I can get them delivered maybe tomorrow if it's uh, not raining and uh, we're still too wet to be in the fields now back to lunchtime I was supposed to get a truck at four o'clock today I did know that that was coming I wonder if it was this one or if I got another one coming I do have um, 19 bags of corn that I'm waiting on yet who knows all right, well, I got that truck unloaded and uh, went and ate lunch. And then I thought of a project that I can work on today. You remember on our field cultivator, we got that one cylinder that was leaking and I said, well, we need to change a seal kit in there, put a seal kit in that at some point. Well, today I guess is that some point. So I'm gonna go back to it. Uh, Dad left it parked down the lane when he was working up the sweet corn patch the other day. Come on. So I'm going to take the gator back there and uh, see if we can't get it off. I have one of every wrench that we own, um, just to make sure I got the right ones. That one there is the one we're after. I think I should be able to knock a roll pin out of there and drive that pin out. Which I don't have roll pin punches, didn't think about that. And take a hose off here, and probably a hose off here. And we should be able to get that off. I am going to start the tractor up and just float the hydraulics to take all the pressure off of it. It looks like it's sitting on the uh, shovels and stuff, so there shouldn't be any weight on it, but we'll just double check it. What are the chances I'm going to take an oil bath when this thing comes off? 
Yep, that's what I thought. All right, well, the hoses were the easy part. I do have to go get some uh, roll pin punches. Be able to get one out of each of the front and the back there, and then that cylinder will come loose, and we can take it up to the shop and work on it on the bench. Okay, well, that really was pretty easy to get it out there. We'll run it up to the shop, try and clean it up a little bit, get some oil, get, yeah, get an oil catch can and take it apart. Okay, well, I cleaned it up a little bit. I had a little more to do, but I just wanted to be able to see how this cylinder comes apart. Appears we have a snap ring in here, uh, so we'll have to take that snap ring out and then this should pop out of there. Uh, it is going to be filled with oil uh, inside there, so I kind of can explain to you how hydraulic cylinders work, I guess, once we get this apart here. And uh, yeah, before I do that though, I do want to double check the uh, part number here on the cylinder versus the seal kit that I have that I'm pretty sure is for this, but I want to double check and make sure that I've got the right seal kit before we take this apart. Okay, well, that was more difficult than it needed to be because um, I have this little kit and this kit that um, I know I got last year for the cylinder, but I just... When I went to look them up, I got one part number that was different than either of those two, and I couldn't figure out what I did wrong. But it turns out that one part number that's listed on the parts website substitutes to these two. So we've got the right stuff. So we need to take our cylinder apart and figure out where all the seals go. All right, we are going to attempt to do this without creating too big of a mess, but basically this snap ring has got to come out first. Doesn't look like it'll be too difficult. Might have to use two hands and get a screwdriver to pry that one side out. Okay, well, that part wasn't too bad. Let's see if that'll come off. Now, this end, I assume, just pulls out of there. Maybe more difficult than it uh, sounds, though. Okay, well, I've got you guys situated where you can see what I'm doing, but not my face, so it's okay. Um, I don't know what the best way to go about doing this is. Clearly not what I'm doing. Um, I doubt I can just pull it. Yeah. Hmm. I'm going to get some brake cleaner and clean some of the gunk out of there so I can see what I'm dealing with a little bit better. Well, I don't know. It looks like it just pops out of there. But to be honest, I'm not sure what that snap ring would do and how it would hold it in. I don't know. I might have to play with it for a minute. Okay, well, I took this valve off. That, uh, that's for the AccuDepth system on this fuel cultivator. So we could let it drain a little bit more of the oil out. Um, yeah, our current plan, you guys are going to like this. So our current plan is to take this end of the cylinder and tie it to that chain. Take the other end of that cylinder, tie it to that come along, around that post, and start pulling it apart. And that should make it come. Um, the less oil that's in it, the better. So we'll let it drain for a minute, but uh, that should work because it should force this end to pull out. Okay, here is the setup. We've got her tied to that side. We've got our winch come along, tied down this other side. It's gonna pull the whole cylinder rod out, which is gonna force a bunch of oil out of the inside. You can see it shooting out. Eventually that ram will bottom out and it will pull on this end cap. It should. Oh, I'm getting the air out. The oil is all out. There. Now we should tighten up 
and pull this end cap out. Oh man, she's tight. Huh. I don't want to pull it too much because it's going to pop. Yeah, I've got tension on it. Hmm. Gonna have to think about this. Okay, well we're learning. I had to I had to talk to the John Deere tech. Apparently that end pushes in and then there's an internal snap ring that we've got to get out. So we're, we're figuring that out. There we go. Okay. What's the weakest link? It's got to be that cylinder, doesn't it? Oh. Huh? You know, keep going. There it went. Cool. I even got it on film. You guys are lucky. Maybe. I don't know if we got it all. That's where we. There it is. That's the cap, but where's where you get the cylinder out there? Yeah, we're close. Okay, we've got it out. So this was a little bit tricky. Um, there was that outer snap ring, this one, so they took off. And then we had to push the whole thing in and put this kind of a spacer into the groove in there to push the snap ring on the cap in and keep it from setting in that groove so that it would pull out which took quite a bit of force but we got it so now we've got to replace all the seals which means these seals these seals which got chewed up in the process and the seal in there which is the one i'm pretty sure is leaking and in order to get to that one we've got to take this cap off which means this nut's got to come off ram's got to come off and then the cap should slide off okay well we've got old seals off of the cap here at least um there's this big fat o-ring and then this kind of flat rubbery plastic piece and then this real skinny o-ring uh the two the orange one and the fat one fit in this groove the skinny one goes in there this groove is where this internal snap ring goes and then I pulled the seals out from in there. There's two of them. They're slightly different. Uh, this one goes inside, and then this one goes on the outer edge. So we're going to put the new ones in. Okay. Well, I got the new seals on the cap portion. Um, I'm working on the ones for the ram here, and they really stack them on there. Um, this o ring here fits down in that groove like that and then there's another one this big black one that goes over top of it and the same thing here there's one that fits in the groove and then there's actually three of them that go over top of that okay we've got stuff ready to go back together here so this is the ram new seals on there the cap um, with that internal o-ring where it fits in that groove uh, quick lesson on how hydraulic cylinders work so you'll notice there's a port on both ends of the cylinder those are where our hydraulic lines hook in so when you put pressure to one side of the port it pressurizes this side of the ram which pushes it out when you pressurize the other side of it it puts pressure on this side and pulls it back in that's how it moves it back and forth to raise and lower the implement these seals here keep oil from moving past the ram uh, and obviously these ones keep it from spraying out the end. So now we've got to put this back in there. Basically, we've got to get this to slide in. And then uh, once we get to the cap, we've got to compress this uh, snap ring to get it to slide in. It will fit into that groove 
And once that's in there, it kind of locks it in place so that it won't pull back out. And then we put our other snap ring on the outside, which keeps this from pushing in past it. Well, I've made it that far by hand. That is a good thing. I don't know if I'm going to make it all the way, but we're getting close. All right, we got her back together. Now, hopefully that fixed our leak. Um, I'll put that valve back on here and then go put it back on the field cultivator. All right, well, we've got that cylinder back on. I got the pins in, I got the hydraulic lines hooked up. I do need to start the tractor up and cycle it a few times, lift it all the way up, all the way down, and refill that cylinder with oil because right now it's all air in there. So we gotta purge that out and uh, make sure that it'll it's got oil in it. Otherwise, weird things happen. And uh, yeah, so. Let's uh, do that and then we'll have this project wrapped up. And I've been working on this, or well, I haven't been working on it, but I've been wanting to do this. It's been on my mind. I've had that seal kit for a year now, so it's a good thing to finally get it done and out of the way. Sometimes little projects like this just get put off and you think, ah, I'll do it on a rainy day or I'll do it sometime, and you never do it. Well, today was a rainy day and I did it. Well, there's not oil spraying out everywhere, so that's good. And everything's moving up and down, so we should have the air worked out of it. Looks good. We'll go check and see if there's any little leaks or drips, but I think we're okay. All right, well, I'm glad to have that done. Um, I guess that's all I'm gonna do for today. Uh, I'm gonna hold off on treating those beans until tomorrow. Um, I did talk to the guy that I thought I was gonna have to do some other ones for, and he said, nope, they're already in the ground. They just got planted because they were in a hurry. So <laughs> they planted them untreated, which I don't care, whatever. Not my, uh, not my field, not my customer. But anyway, um, yeah, have a good night and uh, check back tomorrow. I don't know what else is going on tomorrow other than I might try and get some seed deliveries and stuff done. Um, so, but like I said yesterday, I do have some rainy day topics. This video just got a little bit long with that cylinder project to uh, launch on uh, my soapbox today. So maybe tomorrow. Anyway, uh, have a great night, everybody. Thanks for all the happy birthdays for my dad yesterday. You guys are awesome. I really appreciate it. So comments, questions down below, hit the like and subscribe buttons for me, please. See you tomorrow.